Hi everyone, my name is Meenu and welcome to another edition of the podcast Blockchain Hustle. We have been looking at some of the players in the NFT infrastructure space. It is the basic building blocks of the NFT ecosystem. And I shared on Mintgate, Collabland and Afterparty in the previous episode. And in today's session, I plan to delve into a couple more. Now, a key lever in the creator's economy is the community. How well do the project owners engage with the community? How big are the communities? How engaged are the communities? All these work towards the digital value of the crypto economy of the creator. And that is the space in which the two entities that I'm planning to uh, talk about here, that is SourceGrid and Riley, play in. So let's start with the first one, which is SourceGrid. Now, SourceGrid is a community engagement platform. It's a tool for the communities to measure and to reward the value creation. Now, every community has a few members who actively contribute, who are contributing towards the growth of the community, the growth of the platform. It could be either through having discussions or through having some upvotes in the discussions, through referrals or through promotions or sharing some tips in the community platform. These are the folks who are actually adding value to your project. So if you would like to reward them, how would you go about doing that? Especially when you want to do that, to rewarding them with their own, with your own tokens. Source cred helps in this effort. It helps you to make those efforts more visible and rewardable. The effort by the community members. So the wealth would flow to the folks who are actually making your project or your platform more valuable. So how does it work? So let's say I make a contribution. I am a community member and I make a contribution to a project. SourceGrid would see it and it would assign some kind of a value or uh, what this value is translated to is in terms of creds. So it would assign an amount of cred based on the amount of contribution it sees from me. So of course it needs some kind of a metric as to map the contribution to the number of creds that it would assign to me. So if I am bringing in more project uh, value to that particular platform, I would get more creds. So the more con you contribute, the more creds you get. And these creds are non-transferable. You cannot buy them, you cannot sell them. So that is, you have to earn them. So fine, I do get some creds, which is a kind of a reward from the community. But if I were to monetize those rewards, how do I go about it? Because Look, these creds are non-transferable and I cannot buy or sell them. So how do I monetize them? So what these guys have done is they have put together a project or a community specific digital currency, which they call it as grain. Now contributors would get grains, which is commensurate with the cred score. And as I said earlier, I would get cred, which is commensurate with my effort, with my contribution towards a project. So these, basically, the grains are commensurate with the contribution made to the project. And uh, these grains, they are transferable. And you can actually buy those, for example, you could buy those grains at a digital exchange. In fact, the projects can decide how to utilize the grains, the usage of the grains. It could be used as cryptocurrencies or as a token. So for example, grain can be used to redeem uh, or grains can be redeemed as USDC or in some projects it could be treated as a share of some future income. It depends from project to project, community to community. How do you want to uh, link these grains to for monetizing the efforts of the contributors? So basically what is happening here is that the grain has become a conduit. It's become a channel through which the project owners can financially reward their contributors. And one example is Friends with Benefit, which uses cred to measure the contribution from the community. So it could be, for example, if I post some 
comment or I post some content on the platform and if it garners let's say certain emoticons or it garners certain votes I would get some grains uh, sorry I would get some uh, free FWB the friends with benefit tokens in return of it so I am a contributor and I'm being rewarded in this way now these are examples of grain being used as a monetary reward but it could also be used as yet another scoring system, just like Preds. Uh, it depends upon how you want to use it. Basically, grain is serving now as a foundational infrastructure for building the economic and the governance mechanisms. So while I was going through it, it reminded, it's actually this particular thing is a two token system. So it reminded me of something called the burn mint equilibrium, the PME model. And uh, the BAB model is in fact one of the methods by which the project owner can increase the uh, value of its token by reducing the velocity of its token. And uh, for all those who are interested to know more about this BAB model, I had covered this in one of my earlier episodes. It was under the tokenomics series. It was the 51st episode entitled as Increase the Value of Your Token two-part series and the BME model figured in the second part. So if you guys, anybody is interested, do check that out. The next one that we have here is Rally. Now, Rally is a social tokens platform for creators, for influencers and their communities. Uh, you can create, if you are a influencer or you are a celebrity you can create your own token and then you can build up or scale up your community around it the platform actually started with some fungible social tokens and later on they launched the nft platform for its rally creators now nfts they are actually priced for the digital value but when i say digital value what is this digital value comprise of it can comprise of uh, things like the NFT scarcity, reputation, utility, and liquidity. There could be many more, but in my mind, these come out to be the dominant ones. Now, generically speaking, if you look into the NFT marketplace right now, the NFT arts and the collectibles are the ones which get the more buzz. And uh, these are uh, trading or these are uh, uh, anchoring on something called the NFT scarcity that is one of a kind and uh, uh, or it is a reputation which is the reputation of the profile uh, of the creator and these are usually the transactional exchanges now Riley is building the NFT capabilities which would allow the creators to go beyond the scarcity beyond the reputation and focus on the NFT's utility and the collectability. So things like uh, being able to mint NFTs, having a marketplace where you can trade or sell your NFTs, you could uh, earn money through these sales, you can utilize those NFTs to engage with your fans and build up tools to enable the creators to leverage on the various multiple NFT community uh, use cases out there things like your gated access your ticketing and so forth so you are building up some kind of a utility access for the nfts so as i had earlier mentioned that a key lever in the creator's economy is a community so using all the tools which are there to help build up engage with the community scale the community this is where these guys source script and rally play in and so we have Riley here working on or focusing on the utility access and the engagement. So now I have mentioned friends with benefits a few times in this uh, episode and also earlier. I do have in mind to plan one episode on friends with benefits. It's quite an interesting uh, project, but that's in the pipeline. For my next episode, I would uh, take up on a couple of very exciting players in the NFT social network space. So do stay tuned for that. And thanks for the listen.